Hi everyone, Knoopsy here. The iPhone 12 mini at the time of this video is nearly six months old and I've been using it since the day it dropped. This is the iPhone that many people have dreamed of for quite a while, a return to the small form factor, but with the power and features of the other iPhone 12 devices. But for some reason, that didn't translate into popularity and sales of this device. We'll talk more about that throughout this video as well as I'll be sharing my thoughts on this phone after six months. This is my long-term review. Today's video is sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, first up, design. Now, I can't stress this enough, using a small phone in 2021 is an awesome but rare thing. It's such a refreshing and truly wonderful experience. You can reach all the corners of the display, it fits in your pocket, and it's just an absolute joy to use. And the size is something I really loved about this device, especially using the iPhone 12 Pro Max alongside this phone over the last six months. Going to this device is such a treat. This phone is thin, light, durable, and is held up quite nicely. There are just a few small dings in the aluminum around the edges from daily use, but the display itself is flawless and so is the back. I've only really put the phone in a case just for some of the more rough and intensive shoots I've gone on with this device. This one's from Moment, but besides that, the phone's been completely exposed and it still looks pretty new. Overall, I still love the design on this device. Those squared off edges are modern and beautiful, the phone feels great to hold, and even using the 5.4 inch display has honestly really not been an issue. Sure, it's smaller than most phones on the market, but it's not bad at all. Typing at times can be a little bit awkward, but besides that, watching videos, scrolling on social apps, editing photos, the small screen only looks small till you actually start using it. Then, it's tons of fun. Also, using this phone on a daily basis, just like I said in my 12 Pro Max 6 months later review, it still feels as fast as day one. There's no lag, no long wait times, multitasking, gaming, everything here is smooth and fast. The animations are fluid, opening apps, no problem, everything is crazy crazy fast on this device. Apple didn't bump down or skimp on the specifications in this device, it has everything. A14 processor and all, it's a flagship phone, but tiny, that's it iOS has also improved quite a bit since this phone dropped back in the fall of last year. It's gotten much more reliable and steady on a daily basis, and there's just been some great updates all around that have made iOS 14 much better. Now if you have an Apple Watch, you can actually unlock the device even if you have a mask on with Face ID. There's also the new anti-tracker app stuff, Apple Music has gotten better and cleaner, and all around the whole operating system feels much more polished than day one. I'll be honest though, all the hype about custom app icons and widgets faded real quick for me over a few months, but the app drawer has been really, really useful. I've gotten rid of so many apps on my device, only keeping the essentials, but some of those companion apps that I need or things I can't delete but don't use frequently, I can just throw them in the app drawer. They're gone, but they're also still there. It's a great way to add a more minimal experience to iOS. Now let's talk about the cameras on this device. The whole smartphone market for cameras has changed quite a bit even since this phone dropped, but I still think Apple is one of the leaders here when it comes to smartphone cameras well into this year with this iPhone 12 series. There's not a high megapixel count, there's only two cameras in the back, one selfie camera on the front, no crazy crazy features, but what Apple really excels at here with their cameras is consistency, quality, and reliability. Photos with the selfie camera are pretty alright, they look crisp and detailed in most conditions. But the rear camera setup is the real champion here. Both the main and ultra wide camera are 12 megapixels, and they're incredibly consistent in terms of image quality, but also they just straight up take great shots. With this device you just point, frame your shot, and shoot. Almost always, photos look incredible. Dynamic range is stellar, colors are beautiful, photos are sharp, depth of field is natural, and even without the bigger sensor found in the 12 Pro Max, you can take some crazy good shots of close-up objects with nice, natural, beautiful blur in the background. No portrait mode needed. Of course, night shots on this device with night mode are some of the best on any device today. Consistent, bright, beautiful, and they look natural, once again. Video recording is also another wonderful thing on all the iPhone 12 devices. 
There's HDR Dolby Vision recording and the phone shoots up to 4K 60 frames per second, although Dolby Vision HDR is up to 30 frames per second. I've shot so many videos with this device just during daily life, but also portions of full-on YouTube videos, as it integrates so well with DSLR footage. Straight into the camera, videos are sharp, dynamic range is once again on a whole nother level, autofocus is excellent and quick, stabilization is ridiculously smooth but not unnatural looking, and honestly there are other phones that do come close, but the whole iPhone 12 line still kills it with video recording. All of this camera performance is packed into this tiny device, so whether you're shooting video or photos, this phone is amazing. As you can bring it into more places, it's easier to hold, carry, and pocket. It's the dream phone for mobile videos and photos. Okay, just like in my original 12 mini review, I've said many similar things to that video. Mostly positive things, even more positive things throughout this video. But the one issue I still have with this device is the battery life. and it hasn't gotten any better. It's a small phone, it has a small battery, I get it, but it's just not enough for me. Thankfully I've been home most days over the last few months and I can just throw this phone in the charger or slap on this Anchor Qi MagSafe battery pack thing which looks kind of funny on such a small phone if I'm running low on battery throughout the day. But on average with battery life, when I start most days at around 7 or 7.30 in the morning, the battery tends to die for me in the early evening. I usually have to stop and charge this phone at around 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the evening on most days, even earlier if it's a more intensive day and I'm using my phone a whole lot. It's a phone you kind of have to plan out with battery life, and potentially bring around a charger wherever you go if it's a longer day. The other thing to note though is the battery life is not going to get any better as this phone ages, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse. So overall, besides the battery life on this device, this is really a great phone. The performance, the design, the camera experience, the software has gotten much better, everything here is pretty solid. But why was this the lowest selling out of all the iPhone 12 models? Why is Apple cancelling the iPhone mini after this year's iPhone 13 mini? Well, there are a few reasons. When this phone first dropped, we were kind of in a state where we've really adapted to our new stay-at-home reality. We're spending less time out and about, more time on our phones, and doing more on our devices than when small phones were a big thing. And a small phone like this isn't the best for watching videos, typing, facetiming with friends, and doing daily tasks. Also, with that small battery, you won't be able to do many of those things either for that long. Well, the 12 Pro Max was the best selling out of all the iPhone 12s because, well, it's the best phone for at-home usage. Huge display, huge battery, and even though it's big and heavy and awkward to use at times, we're at home. Using a big device isn't so bad when we're stationary and not really going anywhere. And don't forget about the iPhone 12 standard. Just a bit more expensive than the mini, but you get a bigger battery, bigger display, and some other little things as well. If this phone launched a year before all of this, maybe it would have sold a lot better. I don't know. Honestly, it's the right phone just launched at the wrong time. And it's a shame that Apple plans to end the mini before it really had a chance to actually take flight. Maybe in the future when all this is over and we're back outside, back at work, back at life, a tiny iPhone will have the chance to be the next big thing. What's also the next big thing is today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is a website and app that has a range of amazing classes about math, science, and computer science, with interactive courses about finance, statistics, physics, cryptocurrency, programming, and so much more. And while these all sound like big, complex concepts, Brilliant helps to simplify these ideas with fun problem solving, beautiful graphics, and engaging lessons, so you can learn, have fun, and use these newfound skills to build and navigate the future. One of the most fascinating classes, and also one of my favorites, is called Waves and Light. This course is incredible. It details waves through light, sound, and more, as well as puts those concepts into practical lessons. Ever wonder how noise-canceling headphones actually work? How about strings on a guitar? Well, this course has you covered, through real-world situations, games, quizzes, and more. I learned quite a bit, and I think you will too. Head over to www.brilliant.org slash to sign up for free, and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual membership. Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. 
So what do you think of the iPhone 12 mini? Are you a fan of this phone? Do you hate it? Is it just too small? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, let me know what you think about Apple potentially canceling the mini after this year. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, and thank you for watching.